Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at the Red Dragon K632 Pro, also known as the Nactus Pro. They all get a K number designation as well as name as far as I've seen. Now this one is a three mode, 60%, um, but it does have a barrel encoder as well as some programmable buttons, multimedia buttons already programmed. I think this is gonna be an interesting little kit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into it. All right, so it comes in a nice little box with the uh, Red Dragon logo there on there. Um, I'm gonna guess this is the accessories and this is the keyboard. So it comes in a key foam bag, which is always nice. And this appears, yeah, that's what I thought. It's a low profile. I do my best to, you know, for those keyboards, just like to not read up much about it, just to kind of have a fresh perspective on it when I receive it. So from the few pictures that I did see, I was like, oh, that looks like a low profile. But I believe it's using half. It might be using the same as the e e Yusu K630, I believe. Um, but we'll have to see. All right, so real quick, let's just take a look at what they include in the box. Uh, we've got our Red Dragon Noctis Pro Manual. Uh, it's just a breakout little uh, pamphlet that does have NKRO. It is, oh, it has, it, I guess it's a sticker. Yeah, it's a sticker, a few stickers. Huh, not bad, they're uh, thinner, but mm, nice. Uh, Red Dragon did, is primarily aimed at gamers, but they have been getting into some uh, some more uh, enthusiast-type features anyway. So we've got a um, unicorn uh, horseshoe-type uh, switch puller and a wire keycap puller, USB-C to USB-C cable with an adapter. I don't know why more companies don't do this. I mean, this it's kind of tight out there. But if you're going to include an adapter, just add the tail to it. See how I can slide down and out of the way so in case I need to plug it into a, a laptop, a newer laptop that only has USB-C ports. Or if I need to take it back home, I need to plug it into my desktop. Boom. All done. Now let's take a look at the star of the show. All right, so first off, we'll go ahead and see. So we've got... Oh, that's a metal barrel encoder. That's nice. Has a little bit of slight clicking when you hear it hit the different um, levels, I believe. So we've got very thin profile. Super thin. And we got one set of legs. So we're going to have two different typing angles. We have a... Oh, yeah, that's, that's good. It's a nice pocket for the dongle. I mean... It doesn't want to release it at the moment, but oh, there we go. So it's got, these are the best. They have a magnet in there, but they also either physically kind of trap it in there, or it's just, just a tap. It's smaller, so you have to kind of shove it in there, and it becomes a piece of the keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the on switch and see what we've got. All right, we got some LED. It is not necessarily the brightest of it, oh, but it's not bad. Let's take a look here. Oh, no, these are even, yeah, these are, these are even shorter than the low profile ones that are in the uh, Otemu board. Oh, and they have the pins. Huh. So, is this a chalk? Chocolate style? It may be, I don't know. Oh no, I'm gonna learn something today. So yeah, that has, as you can see, the pins are basically one's in the middle and one's diagonally off, uh, at basically a 45 degree angle. And this is a tiny, tiny switch. Now I think I have uh, here. But I have a low-profile Keychron 
which I think has similar switches. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug her in and see what we got. USB-C connectors on the side. Go ahead and kick the feet up. All right, I guess we have to get into wired mode. All right, so the M is lighting effects and it's with function two. All right, well, that was a little different. And there's the solid colors. All right, so we do have the ability to use solid colors and we have lighting effects. All right, cool. So you got the basic RGB functions that you'd expect, but then we have what looks to be programmable buttons on this side. Um, all right, so for the arrow keys, it's function two. I don't know why I don't stick to function one. I guess function one is programmable for other stuff. No, function one is used to, but, oh, okay. Function one is basically used for the navigation keys that aren't here. And then you got WASD. I don't know what the Z and X is for. That's by default the volume. Well, that's pretty cool. So, that's a lighting control. It's a brightness. We turn this on, and it's on. Controls the brightness. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, so far, I, I must say, I mean, I'm going to have to come back and lube the, 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 the switches and, I mean, despite it being a pretty low profile case, it's hollow. So, I bet you some zip and fit in here would be perfect. Um, right now though, I'm just doing the initial impression, but on initial impression, I gotta say, I kind of like this. Um, it's low profile while still kind of feeling like a real keyboard. Despite having that really flat profile, it it, it kind of works for me. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not usually a fan of these extra buttons. I'm sure that there's a way to program these and I could probably do macros or who knows what I could do. Um, this doesn't have much, but I'm going to say this is the, the uh, memory record. So it probably I hit that, do a key combination, hit that, and then hit the button that I want. And then hit that again. It probably saves it, I think. I'm not going to mess with it right now because I have it directly plugged in. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I got to say, hmm. yeah, it doesn't, doesn't weigh much at all. But I like it. I gotta say, I like it. I, I want to find out a little bit more about those switches and see if they're the same ones as I have on my low profile Keychron uh, K3, I think. So the M, I'm gonna guess that's charging the mobile battery. That's why it's M. I don't know. At least it's not using one of the other um one of it's not repurposing one of the leds that are is already on here as a charging light indicator so i mean i'm seeing a lot of better things from these i mean i hate to say budget but off the shelf i think is a better you know because they have off the shelf they have in stock product and but they're really doing better now i've heard from several uh, Chinese vendors directly that we're going to be seeing a lot of changes next year including a lot of um, really nice aluminum boards via, via right out of the box some some of them QMK and uh, south of $100 some of them south of 150 but still um, 
and I've seen a few of them, and they're, they're really nice. Now, I kind of wish somebody would come up with a new keyboard that people would start copying, because don't get me wrong, I like the 75% with not, but I think we could find another one that becomes popular. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I like TKLs, but maybe a variance on the TKL. Um, I do like 65% that have the function row, that's one, I mean, we're just a, a bit of, as long as they don't mess too much with this side of the board, they can do some interesting stuff on this side, just saying. Anyway, with this keyboard, like I said, uh, I've got to learn the uh, programming. I'm going to have to, I will, I will be coming back to this keyboard. Um, I like the, is that aluminum? Nope, that's steel. Huh. I don't know. Oh, I'm hitting the magnet that actually, oh, okay, no, that is, I was like, this has got to be aluminum, yeah. So it's got a nice aluminum deck with, um, almost like a wood grain pattern. Um, for the stabilizers, let's see what we got here. Obviously they're plate mounted. Mm, kind of loose. So that's gonna definitely be one to come back to. So um, off the bat I can say that stock, this is probably not going to sound amazing uh, but I I think it's gonna take very little effort I think I can open it up put just one layer of zip and fit down at the bottom uh, put tape tempest tape as much space as I've got if I can do three layers but one may be what all I can do uh, PE foam and lube the switches and I bet you this keyboard, even with these caps that are thinner, but I mean, we are dealing with low profile. Oh, wow. Key caps actually. Oh, no, never mind. I grabbed it the wrong place. I was going to say they're roughly, it's roughly one millimeter. Yeah. So at least it's not less than a millimeter, but. Gotta stop doing that while I'm recording, but. Actually, it doesn't sound horrible. Uh, I've heard much worse stock out of the box. But, um, I gotta say, I kinda like this little. Yeah, I have an Ajaz K670T, I believe. It's a, um, it's the first version, and they've got two. The second one's not swappable, this one's not. Uh, but it has a slot for a tablet. Uh, it is a 60% as well. Uh, and that one's kind of been my, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've been using the soda, but I like this one because I can just plop my Samsung tablet in there. And kind of, I mean, for the most part, I can definitely shoot off some emails, read some Reddit, uh, even manage the uh, channel uh, to a certain extent so I like it uh, but this one is actually it's growing on me uh, it like I said I've got to look up those switches I'm glad that I didn't look up too much about it beforehand but having this um, the rolling encoder metal at that uh, it's really nice. Like I said, it has a nice feel, like a clicky. I want to learn more about these buttons. I'm going to see what's going on under there. I'm going to guess that that's just a daughter board, but we'll have to see. Um, I think this will be an interesting little kit to, uh, to mod, and I may even do more to them. But for right now, uh, I gotta say, it's not a bad little kit. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Red Dragon K632 Pro, also known as the Noctis Pro. It is a three mode um, wireless, three, three mode wireless keyboard that is low profile. It MSRP is currently for $59.99, but 
if you go to reddragonshop.com, it is they're, they're doing a cyber week and they have 20% off. So that would take six bucks or 12 bucks off the purchase, bringing it down to roughly $48, which is not a bad deal, especially if you're looking for a low profile. It has a rocker knob, it has multimedia keys, and then it has four what are called G keys. They're programmable uh, for macros as well as just other keys. They come with red, low profile, red dragon switches, and it does have hot swap sockets that will be compatible with other low profile switches. They, they have a different switch configuration. Uh, they come with PBT, low profile shine through key caps that have a flat profile all the way across. At default, the chin sits at 10 millimeters while the back sits at 17 millimeters, giving you a default typing angle of five degrees. If you kick out the single set of feet that it has, it's gonna raise the back to 24.5 millimeters with an eight degree typing angle. Stock, this keyboard weighs 409 grams. So I've gotta say, while it's not anything amazing, uh, it does have a lot of potential. Uh, I've got to say I like the fact that it has the uh, the newer hot swap uh, style socket. So, you know, having to worry about uh, if the pins are going to work. But it's low profile, so it has a different configuration. Instead of the pins being on either side, they're both kind of, one's in the center, one's off to the, well, depends on how you're looking at it, but looking at it to the left. Uh, it would have been nice that they included some, some dampening, but that's what modding is for so it currently retails for $59.99 but um, they're having cyber week um, and if for some reason you watch this video afterwards and you still want to get a discount you can use Met Tech, and I'll put the, uh, the links down below um, it's just for them to track it doesn't uh, it's not an affiliate account I don't get any kickbacks on the links it's just you want to use the link there they are um, but I mean, compared, I remember I, when I paid, when I bought my Keychron, I paid close to 100, if not a little bit more. Um, now, granted, that's a 65%. We've got the barrel encoder, we've got the media buttons, and we've got the programmable buttons that can, from what I read, can do macros as well as just single keys. Having those macros there, kind of cool. Kind of cool, I gotta say. Um, obviously, it, now it does have two function keys. Uh, I know it says function two, and it also shows the. The menu but it doesn't I think you have to do function one of that to get the menu who knows uh, but the function two seems to be the one more for controlling the lights effects and the colors and I can go into single colors as well and the RGB is decent I mean it's not super bright but it's bright enough that in the studio right now, I'm able to see. I know it's hard to see what comes through on the camera, but uh, a 60% with an encoder that can, I mean, I know it retails for 60, but probably can be had closer to 45. Um, I mean, if you're a road warrior, I guess. Now, like I said, this keyboard, I'm gonna come back to, I'm gonna modify it. I think I can make it sound much, much better. I don't think it's gonna sound extremely awful in the stock sound test but there's times that i just want to just like hey just give me a few minutes with the keyboard before i do stock but and that's not fair because you guys aren't hearing what the keyboard sounds like stock but when i come back to it and i mod it um especially this one i don't think it's going to take very long at all uh the longest part i think it's going to be uh, doing the switches because uh, you know they're so tiny so they might take me a minute We'll see. Maybe I'll get some low profile switches, but still trying to open them up and, and lube them might be a exercise in futility, but it might be interesting and who knows? We could learn something along the way. Anyway, so for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Red Dragon K632 Pro or Noctis Pro, which is a wireless three mode Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz dongle as well as USB-C on the side with a knob with media uh, dedicated media buttons as well as four G buttons which are basically for storing different keystrokes and or macros. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I've got a couple of more keyboards to review. Then I've got a whole bunch of modding to do, but there's gonna be a bit of a break. Um, next week, I do have elbow surgery. Yay. So one of my hands is gonna be uh, incommunicado basically for a couple of days until it starts feeling a little better. So I don't think it should take me out for commission that long, but if you don't see a couple videos for a couple of days, or don't see any videos for a couple of days, uh, you'll know why. But it's just a just a minor elbow surgery, uh, untrap a nerve that's causing some issues in there. But anyway, until next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.